Sense Podcast. I'm Mike, and this is my co-host. Morris. Yes. <laughs> you didn't screw up this time. We didn't screw up this time. We did it right in the same night. <laughs> it's good. Okay. So now I'm going to do my thing and show you people an introduction. <laughs> up where we had left off uh we we're gonna talk about skills now we're talking about starfinder yeah and uh, we're in a different chapter now which i think is the skills chapter correct hopefully <laughs> well yeah well, last i remember we talked about classes left we're going into skills so skills are different how they eliminated a lot of skills they combined a lot of them together kind of thing it's it's more of a it's more of a science fan fantasy system rather than a fan straight fantasy. So you know you got life science, physical science, you know that sort of thing rather than you know oh hey, this is knowledge arcane. No, that's I'm, it's, I'm gonna it's ask fun. you something very important, Mike, and I want you to be perfectly honest with me. Now that we're in the future, does this mean that people are so socially inept that my bluff does not work on them the same way? No, it still works. Good. I was worried there I, for a minute. I'm pricked. Do they still have bluff? I think they <laughs> still have bluff, so it's okay. Do they still have bluff, he says. Yeah, it works the same. I think they still have bluff as a skill. By the way, folks, so, we, were, we were recording this at the same night oh, as the other episode, kind of so I right. am still on the rum. And, but yes, Mike, I'm looking at Bluff. It is a charisma-based skill, okay. so I hope it's this shit there, is so still in there. It's pretty much... They might have combined something else. They also Bluff. still have that you can use it for faint. Yep. Um, still the same way with that. Yep. Yeah, got Lie in there as well. So... Uh, now I see also Computers is an intelligence-based skill, and you can only yep. use it if you're trained. Which, well... Computers, life science, physical science. There's, so, like I said, like a lot of life science is like a bunch of the knowledge skills from different creatures are combined. I'm, life I'm not now. saying that this is for sure uh, what he would do, but I know Eric does not like, you know, Demon Eric does not like computers. So well, he doesn't like using computer. Well, so when it comes, he likes them as long as he doesn't have to touch them. Yeah, but it, it was, <laughs> imagine if you had said that about your wife. It's like I like her as long as I don't have to touch her. <laughs> well, all right, yeah. But some anyway, of my friends, some of their wives. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there right now. My joke is, or is I, could, I could just picture him playing a big bruiser Vesk barbarian character and go, ah, ah, you want me to hack it? Just poof, fist through the Smash. keyboard. Yeah. There, I hacked a it. Vesk, a Vesk soldier with the, uh, what the hell is the dash one? I said it earlier. Anyways. Mm. But yeah. I could see him using that. I was like, I, I run up to it and hit it with my sword or my hammer or honestly hammers because he likes launching and women. But yeah. yeah. I can see him doing that. So we still got diplomacy. We still got the skies. Uh, culture? That's culture. a new one. Culture is the one that basically takes place of like you can use culture for doing like Oh, I can use culture to interpret this language kind of thing. So it's, oh, okay. that's the one you use to, if you want new languages and shit. Uh, engineer is another trained only skill. Um, yeah. Identify creature, identify technology. Technology type, well, like uh, like robots. You can use that to identify robots mm. and shit. 
Intimidate, still there, yay. Yep. Um, life science, intelligence based, trained only. Life science is the one that you want to use when I you want to identify creatures. That's okay. Like, hey, that's a that's well, an apparently that's not the only one because apparently you can also do it with uh, the engineering skill too, to a certain oh, extent. The engineering can do the same thing. I would imagine it's is it more Excellent. effective, like t- choosing. Um, you know, identifying androids with engineering than it is like using, you know, your life perception to. See, I think you can... see androids are a weird thing because they're constructed creatures, but they're also a lot. So I don't even know how you. I think engineering is still the skill you use to identify androids. So. But... The, I, you, the, could, you could probably get a lesser result. If you I am totally something. not saying that this is the same thing for copyright reasons. Right. But my mind goes immediately to Warforged. Ah, uh, well, I hate Warforged. Honestly, yeah, but well. that's Warforged is more. It's not robotic so much as engineering. It's mm. more of a that's an arcane like magic I, mysticism, I a, a clay golem or iron golem. Yeah. You know? It's more of a magic I'm just I'm just saying type. whenever we're in this type of world and we're talking about uh, androids that's you know I think of Warforged it's just the way yeah. it is well yeah because that's that's just the thing Warforged uh, were a common thing back in the day so yeah, yeah. so it, got, it's very similar but not quite we've got medicine we've got mysticism mysticism was basically your catch all for any kind of magic things now. So that's like spellcraft and knowledge arcane combined into one. And Perm. probably use magic device, actually. So all those three are probably combined into one at this point. Yeah. Perception, because that's not going to go that's away. Just, that's the same as it always yeah. was. Physical science. Um, piloting, dexterity based. Yeah, that, that's an accurate choice. Yep. Um, professions, of course. Sense motives. Uh, professions covers a lot more shit than it used to. So, yeah. Mm. Well, like, now you can use, like, oh, I use life science to craft things. You don't, there's no craft feats anymore. You can make, if you have so many, you know, whatevers, you can use, like, if I have so many, you know, ranks in engineering, I can use that to craft a computer. <laughs> rather than having to take a feat to do it now, which is kind of cool. So, that's I, a cool thing. Well, we'll get the feats later. Okay. I build my own computer. It runs specifically on the Linux kernel. Exactly. Sorry, I had to. Anyway. Yeah, you're getting warmer. Uh, you're getting warmer. Yeah, okay. Sorry, we won't get into that. That's, <laughs> that's uh, crazy. Those of you who know us well enough, Already yeah, know. Hey, my friends out there to listen to this podcast. Those, podcasts, those of you them. who need to ask, write Mike the damn email I keep telling you at the end of every episode. Yeah, ask me a question. I would be more than happy to explain this entire thing. Uh, so stealth, yeah. Survival. Stealth, same thing. Survival, I would imagine, doesn't quite work the same way in space. Because I wouldn't it's... think... Very similar, but they add more stuff into I, this. Basically. I'm planet sure, but I don't think you're going around space stations looking for nuts and berries. No. <laughs> if you are, you're. you're that of course, then again, like, that's oh, probably unfair of me because, like, you were going around cities before Morse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not looking for any bushes in the corners, but yes. Unless you're in the red light district. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, feats. Feats, yes. Feats? I... I like a lot of what they did in feats. But then again, there's some feats I'm like, what the fuck, people? Like, a lot of feats they combine to make them less restrictive. So, you know, to get... There's... Like advanced combat maneuvers, which I can't remember. I can't remember what they call it, but yeah. Anyways, it's it's basically used to be the improved trip, improved grapple, improved all those things. It's just one feat now, except you take it for different things. That's cool. Um, yeah. You don't need a lot of the 
the prerequisites you used to have to have. What? Oh, you need you need combat expertise, which everybody bitches and moans about about combat expertise. Which I can understand. I don't understand why you need that feat to take that to do a lot of those things either. Um, they also took like power attack and deadly aim, which are basically hey, I do extra damage if I take a penalty in my attack roll. They combined that into one feat. That's pretty cool. So your range attacks and your power attacks are both the same thing now. That's nice. Okay, now I again I did not do my homework prior to this recording, but right. damn it, oh, oh, I'm looking at antagonize. Wasn't that shit that used to only be for halflings? No, they I, actually had it. For, you can as long as you had, I think so many ranks in intimidate and diplomacy. I think. Or, maybe I'm whatever. thinking of some form of taunt, but you know. Ah, uh, well, see, that was a, that was a Kender thing, but yeah. Yeah, and that was. Mm, it's like I would like to have that for my character because I think it thematically fits. You can but I'm the wrong there. way. I'm the wrong race. No, you can take that in Pathfinder. You didn't need to be the wrong. Uh, you, you, any, any race could take that. Then uh, PFSRD. You're, think, you're, you're thinking, I think of Kender, which PFSRD and I automatic. need to have a talk, talk then, if that's what's really going on. But well. <laughs> We played so many systems; it's it's very easy to get confused on what you're talking about. So, but yeah, antagonize was a feat in Pathfinder. Um, they basically carried it over to this system. Um, the one the one feat I don't remember. The, the, there's three feats that I think are completely and utterly stupid in this system, and that's um. Like there's psychic feats. Well, it's like, oh, I can, I can take this feat and I can get this spell-like ability once per day. Okay, that's fine. But then they have this other feat, which is like, where you can take, it's a mystic feat, where you can take, you can get two first zero-level spells at will at, at, at any time, and one spell-like ability that you can cast so many times based on your level. So that feat gives you basically three spells that you can cast, and this other one gives you one spell that you can cast once per day. How is the power level of those feats even remotely close to what they should be? That I don't know who the hell did the feat chapter, but they need kicked in the balls. <laughs> I mean, not, I love the, not that we take that strong shit. opinions here on the Blind Sense podcast, but enjoy your your shot to the pills. <laughs> Well, I just, I, that's really, out of the entire book, that's the only thing that really bothered So now my mind has gone to an episode of Titus, where, um, <laughs> his, you know, about. you know it's going to be good if I'm bringing up Christopher Titus. So, <laughs> so he, he finds out that his girlfriend is being harassed by somebody at her work, but she won't tell him who. And he's like, let me know, I'm going to kick his ass. And then he, he goes there with his brother and his friend, his, his very introverted friend, and he finds out that it's actually his girlfriend's lesbian boss, and, and like she didn't realize that you know she was making unwanted advances because right. the girlfriend wouldn't speak up about it. And his friend just starts bursting out. He's like, go ahead, Titus, kick her ass! Basically. Go ahead, I Mike, just, especially if it was one of the women at Paizu who wrote it. Kick her in the nuts. I just don't understand why... Okay, because there's these are psychic spells and these are mystic spells. What's the difference in power? There's not a whole lot of difference in power level. So I don't understand why this one, where you get basically three spells for one feat, and this one, you get one spell that you can use once a day. I, it's... it's it boggles so if mind. you thought for an instance you were going to talk about power levels and I wasn't going to go, he's over 9,000! You were also wrong. Well, <laughs> basically, <laughs> this, this mystic feat, you can take two zero-level spells where you can cast them at will. So, as many times as you want per day. Plus, you get a first-level spell from the mystic spell list that you can cast based on, I think it's, you can cast it once per every three levels of whatever class you attain. 
So you see how our friendship has progressed, folks, where like instead of chiding me for having brought in up Dragon Ball Z, Mike just completely sandbags it and continues on with something else. I pretty much ignore Dragon Ball Z when I'm rich. Because <laughs> it's the most horrible series ever. Yeah, oh, I've been hearing a, a wonderful, horrible things about Dragon Ball Super. But, uh, I'll, yeah. Some of it's not bad. It's just like, the oh. American version is horrifyingly bad. Okay, they went back and they did a redux of that. Yeah, they redid it, which... Um, it's, it's better than it's I've better seen. until so, apparently you get. I've only ever seen the original. It, so yes, but it's it. it's better until you get to the Frieza saga, which apparently after they re-edited it and tried to fix it, the Frieza saga still sucks. And Frieza, I understand they eliminated a lot of the stuff from the American version. It's like, well, yeah, he's taking a crap, so I'm going to eliminate that. Yeah. Okay, there's a that. there's a conveniently well placed bush for young Gohan having his pants off in this scene. That's what I mean. It's just... <laughs> I can understand something. So, just, okay, not too much longer on this because this is horribly off topic, but I am going to say two things. Is like, first off, um, fucking... Uh, uh, in Super, it comes out that Goku has never ch- kissed Chi Chi before in his life. <laughs> yeah. That's because Goku's a fag. The, the, <laughs> big sweaty men fighting. Excuse my friends, fighting I, don't, super hard. I don't mind gay people, but yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's like sometimes I use cocksucker like it's a negative term, but, but you know, I kind of wow. kind of want that <laughs> stuff to happen. Anyway. <laughs> Goku oh, never kissed. Goku part, never yeah. kissed Chi Chi, and apparently, um, Plague of Gripes I watched recently did a good thing on uh, Yamcha. Is, is is bad enough, but Tien gets no respect in that setting. Right. And he did a, an interesting thing about how clearly Toriyama hates Tien. So might want to check that out if you like the depraved things we're discussing right now. Um, <laughs> now. The the other thing oh, lost my train of thought. Thank you, booze. <laughs> the, it's all good. The the other thing about uh, Dragon Ball Super is that it's been all messed up because of DBZ, and now Toriyama doesn't remember some of the characters. Like it's 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 a whole thing. I shouldn't get into it, but like launch and other characters from way long ago in original Dragon Ball like don't make repeat appearances because he forgets about them or we're all supposed to love Goku and I don't know that's serious man it doesn't appeal to me honestly so it's (laughs) it probably shouldn't I came into anime late in my life so there you go so one of the things that I appreciate appreciate about Plague of Gripes on his channel is for all the messed up weird stuff that he does one of the things he makes very clear is like if you're going to be artistic if you're going to be objective like you need to look at things for the flaws that they have and this is how I'm going to attempt to not have to edit this back out and get back on the Pathfinder slash Starfinder is that even though this has flaws, there are still things that we appreciate about it, like, you know, exactly. Dragon Ball yeah. Super. And it's there's a lot of things that went in a good direction, but some things, not so much, guys. Try again. <laughs> some of the character backstories and stuff I like from Dragon Ball Z, it's just, you know, if I was 12 and it came out when I was 12, I'd probably love the shit out of it. Which but unfortunately is a problem that we. Five, so. This is a yeah. problem that we have with rabid fans today. But again, completely setting this aside and getting and back to the topic at hand. To uh, yeah, so we got through feats, and now I'm looking at space goblins, which is something I definitely have conflicting feelings on. It makes sense the way they explain how they got into space, so I kind of appreciate that, but it's. Just tell me a little bit, Mike, because I didn't read that section yet. <laughs> uh, I... Basically, they stowed away on spaceships and stuff to get into outer space. Is basically how it worked out. There you go, and folks. they're basically infesting Absalom Station now, which is the big space station, a.k.a. Babylon 5 of the Pathfinder. See, universe. now you thought the, the rat folk would be the rats in the future, but no, no the goblins are. <laughs> 
Well, right folk have their own plan, so. Equipment, was there anything uh, particularly cool in that you wanted to talk about, Mike, or should we gloss well, over? There's just a, basically any weapon you can possibly think of that have an equipment. Well, I'm, I'm noticing Fang Blade. It's like, okay, you know that I saw my... That, I believe, is a Kasatha weapon. I, 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 you clearly saw me watch Warhammer 40k and go completely apeshit about, yeah, chainsaw swords! So you saw me coming. Oh, okay. I just didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, for, and they 40k, have so far as I know. They have different levels. So like, even... You have even level um, 1 to 20, basically, you buy, at level 1, you have access to basically from 1 to 3. And as you go up in level, it basically, you know, 18th level, you can have 20th level weapons. Okay. But so yeah, you even... even um, high because then you're too powerful for your level kind of thing. Which is basically a throwback to fourth edition to a certain degree, which is it's, I hate fourth edition, but that eh, kind of makes sense to a certain degree. You know what I mean? But even before Gears of War, I'm pretty sure it was Warhammer 40k who started that whole uh, chainsaw sword trend. Um, we got vehicles. I see there. There's a uh, hover pod and like some. Very so yeah, they have a police car. Star Wars looking stuff right there. Yeah, they have a police car. They have like a hover pod. They have some some of that sort of things, and then you get into starships, uh, which is a completely different category. But yeah, <laughs> can they make those the, are basically driver vehicles where you can drive on the ground. A lot can they stuff make the stuff. Kessel Run in twelve parsecs? <laughs> Not much. It's named the Millennium Falcon. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm, I got a nerd out again. I'm sorry, folks, if I'm getting off topic too far again for you. It's all but, good. Um, we all did you out. Did you see the whole thing where they had to go into uh, the Kessel Run being only 12 parsecs? And they're like, that's a unit of measurement. It's not a unit of time. And then some wily motherfucker went in and was like, no, you see, yeah. they plot the course and they do multiple jumps and the Millennium Falcon did less jumps than the other ships and that's how it won. Which, if, if you really want to explain it that recently, you have a problem. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, Just maybe? Just accept it the way it is. It's a different dude, world. It's different terminology. Just use it Dude, that way. I can, I can accept he's just a writer he messed up but i have a degree of respect for the fans who are like oh I i'm do too. I i'm gonna that. go in and i'm gonna I'm find gonna a way to make this work to make it make sense that's cool but except yeah. except except you guys who are fans of star trek and want to make transported technology a reality you need to be stopped that's that's Again, I'm it's going the on the Heisenberg a... Compensator, Morris. <laughs> Screw Heisenberg Compensator, man. They're still destroying you physically in one place and creating a clone of you in the other place. That's not you. That's I not agree you. with Dr. McCoy on that point, yes. In the first movie, and then he uses it in subsequent movies. I agree with what you. What the hell, really McCoy? Do. What the hell? But yeah, I couldn't not geek out about that too where it's like that technology if you really think about it destroying yourself and then being cloned somewhere else that's horrifying you are a sick individual if you voluntarily use that tech you're the shit out of me dude let me tell you <laughs> i've got a horror i've got a horror story in particular that like i've got the the base treatment in my head i'm gonna work on that i i think that'll be really good um but yeah, let's... no matter what you say, it's not safe. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I don't trust that at all. And especially no. if you folks go back after watching all the good Star Trek films and you go back and watch the, the first motion picture attempt, they actually address how horrible that can go wrong if they screw mm -hmm. something up. See? Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, okay. the the line. We probably should digress from that. Yes, topic. absolutely. Yeah. But I will just say that the line "What we got back didn't last very long" still haunts me. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, spells? You want to talk about some spells, Mike? Spells are different in this system. Whereas, like, they don't have a variable effect based on your level. You get the spell, it does the same thing if you're first level versus 10th level. It does the same thing. It does the same amount of damage. It does the same amount, you know, it just does the same okay. thing. Okay, so this was kind of one no of the variables. things... This was one of the things that we were discussing where it's like this system is a little step closer to Dark Eye than it is original Pathfinder. Yes, it's um, very simple. It's eh, I appreciate this the simplicity, which I think is why they did it because oh I don't have to use as much space in the core robot. I think that's why they did it that way. Do but then again, it makes it a little more ridiculous because you know what I mean. Does it, that's one. It, that's one of the main problems I have with the system and the spells. Yeah. Well, like, what well, does it get to the point where, obviously, if you can use the same spells at a lower level as a higher level, um, presumably they have the same oomph behind them. But does it have like your your reservoir increases as you power up of your mana, or not really? It's the same spell no matter what the fuck. If, well, you cast, what if you have a third level spell and you cast it at 20th level, it's the same spell you cast at 20th okay, level yeah, I, if you cast at 8th level or whatever the hell level you get third level spells. Okay, I, I get that, same but let me, let me rephrase. Let me say is okay. like, as as a mage, does your your total base of pool of mana points you can pull from go up? or You get more spells, yeah. Meh. So it's basically... Not, it's like a sorcerer. Every class in Pathfinder is... Based on it's you can't memorize spells, so it's not like a wizard. Yeah. You have so many spells per level, just like your bard works. So is that like all like there's no wizard equivalent that just like reads no, spells no for the day? No. Yeah. It's all it's all spontaneous casting. So if you have these spells in your list, you can cast whatever spells you have in your list. You can't re memorize something else and pick something different. Well, that's... Which is fine, to a certain degree. That's I, I, fine, but it's not great. Yeah, exactly. I like, I like the variability, and I think the only reason they didn't do it that way is because they needed to save space. Mm. And I don't appreciate that, because oh, I, just, I wanted to make sure I could cram it all into this book, kind of thing. Because, the, honestly, they weren't sure how people would be receptive to the system. That's fair, but can and it's we, been can we positive, so I don't understand what the hell they're worried about. But yeah, dude, if if you look, okay, so like game development, I remember hearing a story that there that was like people would be making a game and then they're like, I don't know if it's good or bad because I'm too close to the product. Mm -hmm. And in video games, in um, uh, Ride to Hell Retribution was more. You want to see some funny videos, folks? go straight from this part of YouTube to look up Ride from Hell Retribution and see some of the people's responses to it. Ooh. Oh man, they thought it was god awful. And the people who were making it didn't know <laughs> that it would get that reception. They thought it was fine. And that's right. kind of one of the things that you gotta worry about whenever you're working on a project like this is like, I think it's fine, but what's everybody else gonna think? So I can understand them playing their cards close to their vest. But now can we get some expansions that maybe kind of fix some of that? Like, that would be, well, that's the next place to go. But like I said, it's like I said, it's early, so it's they got plenty of time to figure shit out. Um, I, I think one of the biggest problems is basically in this spell, it's it's like electrical surge or something. It's what they call it, but it's basically lightning bolt from Pathfinder. Except they change, like, oh, you, the only way you can hit this guy is if he's, you know, using a technical piece of equipment. So, oh, he's, you know, he has an iPad, so I can hit this guy with a lightning, with an electrical surge, or whatever they call it. But it's exactly the same thing as a lightning bolt. Just fucking call it lightning bolt. <laughs> You know, so, it's exactly the same thing. Here's, here's one of the problems. And to be fair, I really like the person that developed the spells, which her name is Amanda Amon Kanz. She's great. I love her, but I just... And I understand it's different. It's a different... It's supposed to be a different system. 
But it's the same fucking spell. Yeah. So here's it's called the same thing as it used to be. Here's one of the problems that I have with your uh, lightning that is different from what you were saying is like, oh, you overload an item that you're wearing in part of your your uh, outfit you or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, my issue with this is like, okay, is it designed to do that? Or, like, as I used for Mike in my original examples, like, I've got my Casio uh, wristwatch calculator. Yes, 1980 Casio watches. I still remember about you. And I overload my Casio to cast a lightning bolt on this mf -er who's standing in front of me. And well, it's, not even, it's not even the person that you have the thing. It's the other guy has to have the thing. So ah, the okay. Watch that it. makes more it's sense because, like, okay, uh, when Mike and I were first talking about this, I was like, you're going to overload your own shit to cast lightning bolt on something? Does it still work afterwards? No, you uh, overload the other guy's crap. Okay. So like, very... you can, like, if the other guy has a battery, you can overload it and make a fireball, which is okay. something completely different. That makes a hell of a lot more sense than how I thought the system worked. It does, it's just... Um, yet still... Why has magic here's, changed so much in the past? I don't, here's I don't my next know. question, but, though. Yeah. Here's, here's my next question. If I strip oh. naked and go streaking through the space station, you can't cast fireball or lightning bolt on me, now can you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just trying to be crazy. <laughs> be, hey, you want to be immune to magic, kids? Be a nudist. The future has taught us this. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell, yeah. Honestly. Pretty much, he says, all right, I win the stupidest argument ever. <laughs> it's, well, if you, if you can't target somebody if they don't have any equipment for you to target. Uh, so th that's the weird thing. <sighs> so planets, how about them? Um, we've lost the Galarian that we knew and loved, apparently. Right. Like, it's disappeared into the void. Nobody knows where it went. Uh, so we've got a few planets here. I'll, uh, Abalon the Forge, Castrovel the Wild, Absalom Station, which I find somewhat interesting in concept there. Um, well, it's basically your Babylon 5 of the system. I just wanted Mike to set me up so I could go... Our last best hope for peace. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it, it failed. <laughs> but in the War of the Shadow, it became something more. Uh, Akaton, the battlefield. I imagine they have a lot of war there. Uh, Verses, the line. Idar, the renewal. Uh, the Dispora, the lost ones. And Eox which is That's the undead planet it's kind of cool in concept to me undead toxic thin atmosphere yeah okay basically this planet back in the old days blew up the next two planets that were next to it with a big weapon which also caused their planet to lose its atmosphere <laughs> so they basically run around they run around in undead ships and attack everybody that's not nailed down, basically. Although they're still part of the packed worlds, but it's just, it's, I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> Traxxas the Wanderer, Lavara the Dreamer, Berethda Lavara the Lavara and Brathea are both Brathita. gas giants. Okay. So they're like Jupiter and Saturn. So people live on their moons as opposed to the planet itself? Oh, uh, there's actually creatures that live in the planet itself, but yeah. Huh. Most of the humanoid type creatures live on the moons. Apostate the messenger, Octurn the stranger. Octurn is weird because that's like a living planet. It's maybe like squishy shit. And it's like uh, Lovecraftian kind of nasty stuff. Mm. Mm. Uh, Never was a fan of that. <laughs> Apostate, ap apostasy, or whatever they call it, that's where all the drow move to? 
So it's 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 basically a lit. It's it's a spaceship that got trapped in the orbit and it's now full of drow that took over and yeah, it's fucked up. Well, it's drow, so yeah, drow <laughs> and half orcs live there and they or orcs and they a drow are uh, you know basically forcing the orcs to do whatever and that sort of thing. So let's see, we've got. Uh, some organizations, a Batacorp, massive faith-based corporation. Uh, which, frankly, it's it's a religious-based Walmart, and I hate it with a... Dude, you said it was... Action. You told me it was Walmart, but you didn't say it was religious-based, too, so that's... If there was one thing you could do to make me hate it more, it's like... like it's, yeah, it's religious-based... So, Walmart. So you've got the the Monty Python. Uh, we're beating ourselves with boards to make the gods love us more. Plus, we also work for a horrible space chain. It's just a, it's it's if God backed Walmart basically. And <laughs> yeah. It's not even Jesus. It's God. It's not Jesus because Jesus is a nice guy and God is not. So. <laughs> It's basically a lawful neutral organization. That's, that's going to be a money and civilization. That's going to be a controversial statement you made I right there. I hate the fucking company with beyond anything you could possibly imagine. Yeah. Oh, a batter, a baiter, or whatever his name is, is also one of the other gods they pulled from Galarian. Okay. Because he's the god of civilization and law. So we've got Android Absolutionist Front. Which is, hey, that's basically, it's Black Lives Matter except for androids. Hmm. Which I don't, I, 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 I would disagree with her. I can definitely so, say that the, the, the android have human rights thing has existed way before Black Lives Matter, but I understand uh, what you're yeah, trying to do. You know with what I'm, saying. I'm, just trying um, to, I'm trying to put this in modern day context. Yeah, augmented cybernetic activists to see where this is going. Uh, you have people that only want people that have no cybernetics. No, they're, they're this is gods. this is like the dude who was on the, some documentary show I was watching. He's like, the next step is to put microchips on ourselves. F you, dude. Not gonna happen. You ain't you ain't forcibly installing Google Glass into me. <laughs> it's even worse. It's even more crazy than that, Morris. Honestly. <laughs> It's more um, like, oh, uh, yeah, I have to have cybernetic arms and cybernetic heart and cybernetic lungs. And I'm sorry, I'm. I'm the, I've more, got... the closer you are to an actual, actual android, the better off you are. No, doesn't work for me. Sorry, doesn't work for me either. Honestly, <laughs> so there you go, dude. I'm I'm freaking paranoid about accepting organ transplants from somebody else or getting organ donor on my driver's license I'm not going cyborg basically yeah the more cy the more cyborg cybernetic parts you have the better off you are is what these people think of so I gotta make the the Robocop reference of this like his brand new heart made by Yamaha no lose the other limb because oh yeah it's, it's more yeah, obscureness that's basically what they're all about New Robocop, like, I don't even know if people caught that, but I'm such a nerd on original Robocop, I was pointing out to Mike, he's like, remember in the uh, first Robocop movie where the, the dick who had him transformed after he was shot was like, I told you, total, total body prosthesis, lose the arm. And, you know, Robocop the has arm, the yeah. one arm still in the new movie. Well, I didn't watch it, but whatever. I, the new movie sucked, I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody said. <laughs> I love Michael it wasn't Keaton. Bad, it just wasn't as good. I love Michael Keaton, but the moment he said "make him tactical black," I'm like, I'm not gonna go see this movie in theaters. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, getting back on topic, Free Captains Outlaw Coalition. Uh, that's basically your pirates of the system. So mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Hell Knights. It's nice to see that they Hell made Knights, it into the that's future. The same thing as Pathfinder. Uh, Knights of Galarian. Bastards that I can't stand. Knights of Galarian also made it. Yeah. Congratulations. Knights of Galarian are basically uh, they're the paladins of the system, if you think about it that way. They they go out of the way to protect people and that sort of thing. So they're actually, I actually kind of like them. You got Starfinder Society. 
which is your Pathfinder Society of the Starfinder yeah. universe. We had a talk about this. There are explorers. I trying to figure out what the hell happened during the gap. It's basically. it's There's not my thing, and I, I hope. Eh. They I hope they don't offend me less than the Pathfinders do. So well, they... I hope they don't go the same route of shoehorning some adventures as to, uh, like you should be a, a society member if you want to do this adventure. Because like my well, joke, you have to be. My, just, my joke okay. I was yeah. telling Mike is totally making it on the podcast. It's like, what if you were playing a horribly irredeemable character? It's like, oh yeah, Bob the rapist. Like he. Uh, yeah. We we don't like him as part of the society, but he's quite the jobber. He got us that map of that dungeon, so and Mike was telling me he's like, no, they wouldn't let a guy like that in. <laughs> Probably not so you a say. rapist. They <laughs> let some pretty unscrupulous characters in, but not that. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Uh, serial murderer. Can we meet at serial murderer? <laughs> they probably wouldn't let him do that either, but. <laughs> Like unscrupulously fine things, that's a different story, you know. Okay, got it. Keep it in gray and not in black. Okay. Basically, yes. Uh, stewards, diplomatic peacekeepers, and this is one of the th things that I take that's issue. That's basically your law enforcement. Agency. This is one of the things that I take issue with with the legacy because the girl pictured here is very clearly either an elf or half elf. And I call BS on making them a legacy race if you're going to go ahead and picture a yeah. faction that way. Uh, Xeno Wardens, Ecological Guardians. Those are your druids. I don't really like them so much because they're, they're like eco-terrorists, if you think about it that way. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's the freaking... Greenpeace Monkey Wrench Gang, or whatever else Pretty I can throw much, in there. Yeah, something like that. So then we come to faith and religion. Basically, uh, there's 20 gods. Um, there's about six or seven from the original system. A Vader, of course, which I can't stand that bastard. <laughs> um, Iomide is still there, which is the lawful good paladin deity. Phrasma, which is the death deity. Serenray, which is the god, of, the goddess of the sun, which makes sense because you know the sun. Desna, which is the traveler deity, she's there. Um, yeah, there's, but there's a bunch of new ones which I can't name off the top of my head. Yeah, so I was, I was, uh, I was pleased to see that Bismara and Desna still made it. Bismara, yes, uh, I enjoyed Bismara. Those were two of the gods that I really she's appreciated. She's your space pirate deity, so yeah. yeah. Um, plus I do remember some of those, uh, promiscuous temple girls of Desna, and I'm glad to see that they made it in the space age. Actually, that wasn't Desna, that was, uh... Shh! Don't destroy my fantasy. Calistria. <laughs> which, she's still there, but she's just not as big as person. Uh, don't destroy my fantasy. Anyway, it's a butterfly, uh, symbolism got me confused. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, a beta, yeah... Uh, Bismara, Dharma Tosh, the Conqueror. That's the new, new one. That's lawful evil god of the best, if I remember correctly. Mm. God of battle and war and shit. Also, I had not noticed in my first uh, glance through this book that they actually have centers of worship for them in different mm -hmm. systems, which is kind of cool. Um, the Devourer, the Star Eater. That's your super evil, that's your, I can't remember the god from Pathfinder, uh, shit, he's the guy that's trapped inside the Pathfinder, uh, but he, with a name like Devourer Star Eater, I would think that he'd be such a reasonable, easygoing guy. <laughs> oh yeah, he's so reasonable. <laughs> uh, Alora 2, I'm probably getting that wrong, The Hidden Truth. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, he's neutral, whatever he is. Uh, Hillax, the Forever Queen. That's the goddess of the Sheriff? No. She is a lawful good goddess of diplomacy for contact, friendship, and peace. Um, Pretty sure that's the goddess of the Sheerans. Yeah, Sheeran head crown with stars. Yeah. Uh, Ebra, the 
inscrutable. I well, only we know how inscrutable people go See, in our party. I like that I think of the inscrutable. Mm-hmm. Doc, Doc's character from that one game yep. I played. Yep. Uh, Iomade, the, the spirit of Galorian, which is... That's the paladin chick. Yeah. Boy, are you out of your realm now. <laughs> uh, Lao Shupu, grandmother rat. That's interesting. So She's they, the goddess of the rat folk. They like went the all... Goddess, though? They went all Asian fusion on that, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, she was, she was a goddess in Galarian, but she was from... The Asian continent. Mm-hmm. So, you didn't see a lot of her. Uh, Norlothotep, the Crawling Chaos. Has we all know made who he is. Yeah. If, you're a, if you're a Lovecraft fan, anyways. Yeah. Oris, Agent of Change. What was that one? Oris, Agent of Change. Chaotic, neutral god of adaptation, evolution, and natural selection. Oh, that's the evolution god. Yeah, who, uh, I'm not sure exactly who he is, but yeah. Actually, they... they Used a DNA symbol for his holy symbol, which I find interesting. Oh, the helix? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, Phrasma, Lady of Graves. She's the most powerful god in the, ever, probably. Uh, Serenade, the Dawnflower. Seren Ray. Seren Ray? Okay, That's sorry. I wanted to turn in the Serenade because that was a familiar sound, uh, sounding word. Um, Talavet, the storyteller. Oh, lawful sure lawful Nutris, goddess of communities, self reliance. Oh, that's and the, the Kasapa deity. Mm-hmm. Uh, Triune, the all code. That's the one that gave you space travel, like uh, that, really? that FPL. The all code. Are we praying to God in the machine? <laughs> did we, did really? we start playing. Uh, it's. One of the deities, because basically three minor deities combined to become that deity. Okay. So there was Bri, which was the goddess of constructs. There was the, uh, I can't remember the first guy. He's a guy from a different planet. And then uh, Cassandra Lee, which was the, the god you helped basically ascend in the at, at the end of Iron Gods. Not and they all formed combined into one god because they were so similar so they used all their power to hey let's give all these people space travel so they basically gave you hyperdrives and stuff like that which they call them drift engines but yeah sorry when you're talking about merging gods you're probably not in my cup of tea uh... well basically three machine gods basically combined to make a better program if you think about it like that but yeah i'm, I'm just all for mocking ds mocking mocking right yeah, now yeah yeah um, i understand anyways next. uh ergothda the paladin Ergothala, princess that's the undead deity is that an oh that looks like a d to me drink more rum until i can't see um ergothda I guess on second look, yes, that is just a very blocky O, but should be U. U R G A T H O A. Yeah, Argothala. That's where I'm, I'm saying that possibly. after the H, it looks like a D initially to ah, my no. my rum addled mind. Uh, Waden, the endless horizon. He's kind of interesting, actually. Uh, Eurasa, Lady of Wisdom. I like her, too. So, I was going to say, sounds like she's right up your alley. Uh, Zoth Kuthon. Zon Kuthon. He's Zon from Kuthon. Galarian. He's, uh, the one, he's the one that looks like fucking Pinhead. The Midnight Lord, Lawful Evil, symbol of a skull with chains coming out of its eyes. Yeah, probably a nice guy. He's the guy that has like a lot of modification, like like Pinhead from Hellraiser. A lot of his worshippers are those kind of people. Don't worship anybody that comes out of the hypercube. That's all I'm saying. Pretty much, yeah. I don't like considering his sister is the goddess of love from Galarian. It's kind of fuckered up. Then there are lesser gods, which I see a couple of uh, familiar names: Asmodeus, Lamash, too. Yeah. Um, 
uh, we'll get into some of the weirder stuff with like cults and I see like uh, the dude pictured in between Cult of the Devourer and Dominion of the Black it looks Warhammer 40k chaos is all get out but slightly oh, different. It's probably the it's probably the the guy that is the king of uh, whatever the hell that planet is with the, the made out of flesh. Can't so I'm already writing off places I'm never gonna go, and that's pretty yeah, high. Yeah, you don't want to go to that planet. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, also, we have the swarm, the unseen, and I see that we have insidious greys with laser guns. That's in the unseen, yes. Yeah, uh, it's kind of cool to me that they would be like a race worshipping the unseen, but as we were discussing before the podcast, like, I think it's very polarizing. It's worshippers, it's just a cult kind of thing where there's, you know, people don't, they don't understand the unseen, like, I, I, there's reptoids in the unseen too. So I they, think it's kind of like an unspoken kind of covenant between these okay. people. Okay, so I mean? am I wrong to say all the greys are evil as shit? No, you're not wrong. That's what I'm saying is pretty polarizing. <laughs> in Best Theory 5, they're all evil, if I remember correctly. But I do believe they are in Best Theory 5. All I'm saying is, like, you know, meet us, meet us halfway. I understand. It's like Doug used to want to play. Uh, yeah, they're not Asgard from fucking Stargate. Let's Doug used to play, want to play uh, enemy characters to a certain extent. And it's like, yeah, okay, I understand. But um, give me, give me the option for some of those guys who don't want to evilly probe me. And that's that's all I'm asking for here, guys. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Uh. So yeah. That, uh, that pretty much that brings pretty us much back to most everything except for you know yeah world brings us back to I, legacy. I really haven't got into that, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, it brings us back to like legacy. We've got dwarves and elves and gnomes and half well, orcs and half okay. elves. They're still there, halflings too. The thing that annoys me is that like they're not with the base races, and I understand new well, setting it's just, it's cool. yeah. yeah new setting you want to you know like emphasize the new races but i don't yep. see why you've got to make that delineation like that because that just makes me think that they don't exist in the future which from what mike has been telling me of his interpretation we do not believe that to be the case they do this like the elves are basically based on the Venus type planet. Um, dwarves are they mine asteroids and blah blah blah. Gnomes and everything else are just all over the place. So gnomes and half elves and half orcs or halflings are all over the place. They're they're still there. They're just not. In so any yeah, so far out of amount. all the things that I've seen out of this new setting, that is my harshest criticism so far is like the the here's the legacy <laughs> go on the back of the book because we don't care i didn't really appreciate the way they did that either honestly i understand why they did it because they wanted to focus on something different but yeah you know what i mean so meh if they would have said well yeah this takes place in a completely different solar system and whatever that makes sense yeah, but, but it's still the same okay. Solar so system. we have the same, the same solar people, system. Still, we you know. we blew up the planet because why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. And maybe there will be supplemental stuff that will come out later that'll explain that whole thing to me that I'm not quite as pissed I about that. Basically, the way they explain why the planet is gone is because they didn't want to invalidate anybody's experience with Pathfinder in the future. Okay, so before we go, one last yeah. thing that I want to bring up is Big O, which I, I, I have an excuse because it was in the documentation that that was one of the things mm -hmm. that inspired this. And I'm bothered by, I was a big fan of Big O season one, and I like season two up until about halfway through. And the reason that I stopped liking it after about halfway through season two because they do this whole thing where they're getting really close to unraveling the mystery of what's really going on. 
and then they kind of give you unclear hints about what may have happened. Mm -hmm. And then you reach the end, and then they go, uh, uh, the Roger Smith has a monologue, and he's like, well, maybe we were never supposed to know. It's like, F you, we were never supposed yeah. to know. I, I know, I know. I saw the imagery. I know what the thing is that went on. And I mm, just... Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, but basically... Us, but they, yeah. yeah, but they ended the series reset to zero. And I just... Mm, don't do that. Don't do that. So, Starfinder, P Paizo people, if you're listening, which I... Highly doubt you would listen to me in the first it. place, <laughs> but it, on, on the, Someday, maybe. the miracle chance that you are, don't do that. Explain it, even if it's bad. Follow through, like and 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 another mistake that they make is like trying to explain too much, and then pulling back. So even if you don't listen to me and you don't explain what happened. Don't tell me part of it and then go, well, I guess you were never supposed to know anyway. Because that's more in infuriating. Life, yeah. That's more infuriating than telling me nothing the whole time. Yep. I'd rather have you tell me nothing. So. <laughs> okay, so that's all we have time for, Anyways, folks. Anyways, as we digress, yeah. this is probably a good part to, you know, end it at this time. So, uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed what we said. Yeah, any questions? Email me at Valantrix.com. Which I'm going to tell you again right after this. Or no, dot. Valantrix at gmail.com. At gmail. That's, thank you. Nice. Thank you. I knew it was something. My brain doesn't work, so, yeah. <laughs> We've both been in the realm. Yeah, it's all good. All right, folks. We're pirates. We're space pirates Space now. pirates, and we know where the rum is at. So take it easy, folks. Don't get in too much of the rum yourselves. The and rum is not all gone. And keep it nerdy. Later. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Don't do it, Scotty. It'll make you a murderer. Like, again, for the eight billionth and the, a lot of times. Don't do it. Kids, email Mike at philanthropics at gmail.com. <laughs>